And so now it's snowing. There's the shed. I've got the walls up. Oops. Damn machines in. Wednesday I ran out of wood. Had to stop and go back to see the Sawyer. Get more wood. Thursday the lawyer called me up and had me run into the banks and checking on how much money my ex-wife is going to get. And Friday I ran out of screws. What? Oh. I'm back on production. <laughs> that wasn't Tony making noise. That was a wild chicken. He's gone now. Okay. Where's my stapler? Right here. Right, thanks. Okay, good. Oh! Oh! That won't fall off, I guess. Alrighty. It's six degrees outside. I'm not doing this. And I'm gonna show you something else, just a second. These are all deer tracks where the deer have stepped in the snow. See, so he's dragging his feet here, walking slow, casual. Okay, six degrees, there's some deer pee. There's like a whole herd of these guys walking around this yard in their bare feet. And I'm too cold to work. The end. No work on my shed today. This is what's happening in your backyard. There's a thermometer. It isn't 20. It's really about 8. I'm going back inside where it's warm. Work on the project has come to a standstill due to the weather. So we'll have a musical interlude. Oh, you'll love that blue ointment to the crab's disappointment. Take a shower every day. Holy Jesus, how it itches, but it kills those sons of bitches in that good old-fashioned way. This is the weather report. All work on the shed has stopped. It has all reverted back to the planning stage again. So it's too cold to work today. 11 degrees below zero. I, I don't want to do it. I, uh, oh. Jeez, I forgot. I'm wearing camouflage, you can't see me. Look for my hands. See? You'll see my hands moving around. It's like a space movie where I'm just almost invisible. This camo is good stuff. And it's also on sale. I'd buy an elephant on sale and worry about feeding him later if it was a good enough price. On a day like this, I'm thinking about how the mosquitoes are able to live through this and attack me in the summer. Well, it's still deathly cold out. Too way, way, way too cold to work, but I thought a little change of costume that would add a little pizzazz to my movie, so here it is. And this is about as long as I can take it out here. Oh my god. I still haven't been able to get this damn green hat off. It was, it's on good now. Work on the shed today will again be suspended based on the witch's tit factor. This climate change has me thinking. Now, first off, the smart people said it was going to get really, really hot. Or it was supposed to be underwater by now. It's not. No, at minus 20 when I went outside this morning. I'm, I'm kind of cheering on for global warming, but it never happened. And then there's global cooling. We're all going to freeze to death. Hottest summer in 150 years. Next thing they came up with was climate change, which isn't even a guess. Two wrong guesses and a statement of fact. The weather's going to change. Yeah, we're pretty sure of that. We're pretty sure of that already. So I'll tell you what I think. I think, first off, those smart people are not nearly as smart as they're telling us. And second off... I think that all their answers are more complaints than solutions. I don't hear, didn't hear anything that would work. Here's my plan. We go out and we dig these shallow ponds 20, 30 feet deep, maybe 40 feet deep, who knows, out in the Midwest by the croplands. We run all the ditches, maybe a few pipes, maybe a few pumps, 
so that when there's a flood, we fill it up. And right underneath that is the Aguilas Aquifer. About 75 feet down, we just let all that water soak down into the ground when there's a flood. Protect our croplands and roads and towns and so on. Pets. Birds don't mind. They fly away. And then, when there's a drought, pump that water right back up out of the ground. Now, the politicians have the people so afraid that they're going to cook to death or they're going to freeze to death. It's just that much further to convince them that they might drown or go without water. Right behind me is the shed. I just put in the rafters and... Uh, Sorry, I forgot I'm wearing camouflage. You can't see me. Look for my hands. I'll be moving my hands so you can see where I am. Yep. And so anyway, I'm, uh, I'm this far on this shed. I'm going to put up the little side beams, and then I'm going to put that plastic on. We'll see, the weather permitting. And I like this hat a lot, but I haven't been able to get it off my head for days. This is me up here working on the roof. And uh, doing pretty good so far. And could you see my head? Yeah, I got that hat off on me. I used to weigh 240 pounds. Really, really fat. And people would say, don't, don't eat any more pasta. And then other people would say, don't drink any alcohol. And then other people would say, eat only cow things. And other people would say, never touch pork. And here's the solution. Quit putting the goddamn food down your neck. This is how I look. This is the Herculean sex object you see today. It's 45 degrees out today. Very warm. It's raining. I can't work on my shed. And I take this as a personal message from God. And the message is, piss on you. Now it occurred to me that somebody might actually be watching this video to see how a shed is built. Okay. You need this. The big L thing. Hey, there's the L thing. Okay, here's how it works. You get out your magic marker. One side against that board, put the other side. There's a straight line. Let's say you got a 412 roof. There's four. There's 12. There's my straight line. There's my 12. 12 is on the straight line. Four is over there. Get it exactly right. That's the angle of a rafter on a 412 roof. The rest of it's pretty simple. Cut up the boards, nail it together. Oh, and by the way, your friends always find fault with your work. So work has slowed down. This is February. It's Vermont. I <laughs> I've got these things in there, but their ice has come in there. I brushed them off. It's just not coming off. But on the positive side, I found a new way to hold my hat on my head.